morning good evening everyone and welcome to this latest uh, iteration of the indic book club author q and a with author manjula tekal and i am your host abhinav agarwal and i am joined by sai surupa ayer curator indic book club and we both join uh, you know join in in uh, welcoming manjula tekal and we will be talking about uh, her book devyani who you all know is a character from the mahabharata a pivotal character actually uh, so i'm look i'm very very excited to talk to her about not only the book but a whole lot of other questions uh, you know around writing and researching and the creative process the mahabharata and all of that and <clears throat> with uh, that short introduction welcome manjula on behalf of indic book club thank you very much thank you for inviting me so uh my my you know our our pleasure and uh, uh one of the activities of indic book club has been over the past uh, uh, you know more than 5 years has been to encourage uh cultivate and introduce authors uh, writing on indic themes and topics uh, to a wider audience whether that has been through you know the means of uh, uh, you know research grants by way of uh, publishing assistance or by helping promote uh, the authors and their books or by activities such as this which is uh, you know getting uh, uh, inviting authors and asking them questions and uh, letting a wider audience of readers get to understand and know more about them and their books so uh let me begin by asking you now uh you have translated a few books uh, uh, uh Uh, you know already including uh, the former jammu and kashmir governor mr jagmohan his book my frozen turbulence in kashmir so okay. it's not as if and you have written uh, uh, you know on indic today also so it's not as if uh, you know you are a complete uh, uh, you know newcomer to this world of writing but uh, writing your own book right that is a certainly a milestone so tell us a little bit about your writing journey well uh like you said the previous writing and all that stuff there was a huge hiatus of sorts i got involved with life so to speak and after that uh, uh there was a gap and all that stuff so in 2018 my mother passed away and she had uh, you know uh, end uh, stage renal disease so i had to go stay with her for a while and stuff like that so while i was doing that i translated ajaya uh that's that's a biography of chandrashekhar azad written by uh, babu krishnamurthy in kannada so okay. while i was doing that um yeah a lot of things happened in between and all that stuff and then while i was done with that after i was done with that i started writing this uh and by the way uh, ajaya is also going to be published by gorida uh okay. and it's going to be out soon okay. so uh yeah and before that i have also tried to translate another book which has been like you know one of my uh, most impressed kind of uh, book list it's about uh, it's actually a fictional biography of uh, a brahmin young man a man who got converted to christianity and that is the backdrop of the 1857 war um it's called horapala in marathi and yeah it's a fascinating book and it's a biography so um no but i haven't done anything with it afterwards so yeah there it is hopefully you know some day i i'm going to pick it up again and then do it do it again i am almost tempted to you know ask you about uh, this fictional biography but i think uh, we will yes. leave that for a little bit later after we talk about uh, devyani i am i'm very very fascinated by that but uh, yes. if we look at uh, at uh, devyani right uh, uh mm-hmm. people often you know they focus on uh, yayati and uh, then you know how uh, you know yayati is a thousand year pursuit uh, of uh, you know of of uh, the pleasures of life and so on and uh, the other characters like uh, whether it is uh, you know uh, shukracharya or devyani or sharmishtha they often kind of you know become peripheral to the entire story but uh, as uh, you know you uh, 
bring out in your, I mean, it's, it's your central character in the book. And even for mm-hmm. those who read about uh, that particular episode in detail, say, for example, from the full Mahabharat, they, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them come off with a slight, you know, with a less than positive impression about Devyani uh, for a variety of reasons. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, Devyani, the character, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, observations you had when you uh, researched her and what have uh, other authors written about Devyani and why did you choose, uh, you know, the particular, uh, you know, this topic and how you represent uh, her in your book? Yeah, it's very interesting that you say that she is not a particularly positive character. And I'm not going to take away from that at all. None of them are completely positive characters. Actually, not even Sharmishtha, according to my lights. But I leave it to the reader. And <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I mean, I'm sorry if I, you know, if I keep uh, interrupting you. The uh, you know, the Mahabharata is my favorite book, and uh, the fact is that uh, that there is no black or white in the entire epic. Everything is a shade of gray, and yes. uh, you know, often enough, authors tend to portray it as black or white, and that's not the case. So, sorry. Uh, please continue. Yeah. So um, the way I look at it, actually, Yayati is practically the i lost you i lost you on the video is it okay oh no 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 i'm i'm uh, still there <laughs> okay so uh yayati is almost the first guy everybody talks about right i mean uh, before that there has been like you know manu perhaps and then um uh, pururava and all that stuff he's practically the first person like you know you the first character you get to see in anything like you know in puranas or uh mahabharata and all that stuff and interestingly uh the way I read these, this particular story, you know, Yayati, uh, Sharmisha, and uh, Devyani is mostly in the backdrop of the war, the Devasura war. And mm-hmm. the war is what kind of lends them character, if you will. And in some ways, if you look at it, like um, Devyani is somewhat like a victim of sorts of the war. I mean, she's been deeply affected by it in many ways. Tell us a little bit about that, because, you know, very interesting, the backdrop to the war, because there is one other episode that happens, takes place in Devyani's life before uh, she meets Yayati, right? That is Kacha. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, Kacha is also like, you know, she, he's also, he victimizes, quote unquote, victimizes her. In my book, he does not, but he kind of uh, does too. I mean, it's, it's a little complicated. It's more, more complicated than a straightforward, I want to victimize this person kind of a thing. Um, Anyhow, uh, Kacha comes and it is because of the war that Kacha also comes there. So even that is because of the war. And in my book, I also explore Jayanti, um, uh, Devyani's mother. That's, yeah, that's there in some Puranas. She should be uh, the daughter of Indra, right? Huh? She should be the daughter of Indra? That's right. Yep, that's right. In Matya Purana, Devi Bhagavat Purana, all those things that will come. And yeah, so in some Puranas, they actually say that, uh, you, you know, uh, the Jayanti is not her mother. But in some Puranas, they do say that. And I, I go with the um, version that she's indeed her mother. And that adds one more layer of complication to the whole story. So she's been abandoned by her mother in some sense. Wow. So that adds to the complexity of the story. And then she's by she's basically like, you know, she's looking at the whole thing and then she's in uh, surroundings. In She's in a situation where um, devas are not exactly, uh, you know, they're the enemies end of the day. And she's in an Asura community and all that stuff. So she's somewhat uh, like sticking out like some sore thumb. So, yeah. So that is the reality of her situation. And then Kacha comes and then you know, she's also attracted to him because he's from the Deva community and all that stuff. And and there lies the complication. This is so fascinating. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, because you begin your book with that particular episode with, uh, uh, you know, K- Kacha having finished his uh, his yes. task uh, and that meeting with, the, with the, you know, the very fateful meeting with Devyani. Uh, and, you know, when you mentioned uh, that... Uh, 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 you know, her mother was Indra's uh, daughter. 
and and, and she was abandoned uh, that reminded me of this parallel with the shakuntala the birth of shakuntala and how she was abandoned by menka after you know her work had been completed so we have talked about a lot of uh, you know a uh, very strong female characters in the mahabharat and i wanted to turn this over to sai at this point because i think when it comes to you know female strong female characters and writing about them i don't think there's anyone who has written more uh, in the recent times than her so uh, sai I, i you know i would love to hear your uh, you know take and the questions you have for uh, for manjula thank you for flattering me there <laughs> abhinav <laughs> let me add my flattery i have always admired your uh, writing and dito abhinav actually i loved your uh, book thank you thanks a lot uh, thank you Nagi. so yes uh, the, the 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 same thoughts were with me when uh, we were going through a couple of your chapters so before i go to the question a message to all the attendees and the uh, people who are watching it please order the book from garuda books.com/devyani is the by link uh, we'll be sharing it soon so uh, you know we talked about jayanti about devyani about charmishtha and uh, probably we expect to meet madhavi also in future or uh, i actually want to <laughs> <laughs> i i actually want to <laughs> that's another complex character isn't she yes, i mean my yes, god yes. Yes. so this yeah. mahabharata seems to be full of these uh, female uh, protagonists i would not like to categorize any of them as the antagonist because each of them carry their own uh, journey arc and something is so admirably unique about them mm-hmm. at the same time nobody falls into a mold right? exactly nobody exactly. falls into a mold but each of them uh, discovers or lives dharma in her own journey so what has been uh, because uh, in researching about devyani i guess uh, you know you would have done a lot of deeper reading into the mahabharata itself and uh, so what has been your reading into the female uh, characters of mahabharata um that's a very complicated question actually <laughs> we have time man you no. know that's uh, that's no, no, one no. pleasurable thing about talking about mahabharata so mahabharata, we have I, a lot yeah i know so um like you said i think i would like to take each of them as they come you know um i wouldn't want to uh, like none of them like you said fall into a mold and uh, madhavi for example i mean she would be like seen either as a victim victim or some egregious character so mm-hmm. uh, right i mean so you obviously want to analyze understand exactly what what she is thinking where she is coming from etc and if you look at devyani she is all that i mean she is willful she is um, manipulative and she is competitive and she is like um, vengeful everything but that said there is a certain grace about the whole thing and then i don't think sharmisha is also like um, she totally loves yati that's certain but there is also that competitiveness and a slight judgmental tinge about how she views uh, devyani so none of them are straight forward back black and white characters and if they were indeed black and white you probably wouldn't even want to read about them or even write about them explore yes. their characters and so on yes yes so yeah i mean i feel like each of those characters are unique and then they come across with their own baggage with their own strengths and so on um yeah yeah which is the that's, fascinating thing about mahabharata to begin with yeah that's the wholly as you said the fascinating aspect of mahabharata because vyasa has left enough points for for, for us to keep on debating uh, yes eternally i think that's the best marketing plan of uh, vedanta <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> totally <laughs> yeah, totally so i am also here uh, because we've just uh, gone through the first three chapters of the sample you sent and we can't uh, wait to read uh, more and uh, we are awaiting our copies as well uh, so uh, another question that was uh, that just popped into my mind was that devyani's sons that is uh, yadu and urvashu mm-hmm. 
they are the ones who uh, say who have founded the republican systems of governance while right. there are uh, you know sharmishtha's children uh, mostly followed the monarchical uh, system of course puru would get to dominate them all and then you know this followed by the dasharanya and all that right but i mean uh, like do we get to i mean does uh, does the whole republican system you know uh, has any uh, influence from devyani or shukracharya because he being a statesman and a, you know political advisor right. himself so right. you come across uh, you know or is it like an anti monarchical this one or uh, you know how does how do you read into those uh, actually i haven't explored that aspect of it at all Sure. basically it is about wars and primacy and a lot of political thinking but yeah. i don't think i have um, put it as a republican slash monarchical okay, okay. kind of a sure, sure. Uh, system much sure. i haven't i haven't actually thought about it that way uh, to be totally honest so um okay. no but so uh, your reading would be insightful uh, insightful as well so that's something i look forward to whenever i meet uh, authors writing mahabharata because each author's interpretation is uh, so different so yes all ears to hear about the war part of uh, yes yeah so this particular thing uh, uh, the way i look at it is a uh, war for the primacy of waters of uh, between the devas and the asuras and eventually it's kind of like you know the bhrugus and the anus are kind of together in the whole thing and then they go off into kashmir and then uh, beyond those lands and so on and so forth and eventually those are the things that are going to impact further wars and all that stuff like you said into uh, the shragya and so on yeah um yeah <laughs> i don't know what else to say right now <laughs> no i think there are a lot of books uh, waiting inside you to coming uh, come out and uh, we'll wait for them so uh, my next question would be about uh, your uh, research process um so how uh, uh because you spoke about matsya purana and you spoke about uh, then then the bhagavata purana bharata itself and then uh, you know there are so especially the kacha devyani story comes in multiple puranas uh, yes yeah right and uh, keeps repeating everywhere what has been the process to reconcile these uh, sources uh, manjula to uh, you know to weave that uh, seamless story in our books uh, you know so i am interested as an author i am always interested in the process of reconciliation research as well as reconciliation you can uh, you know take your time and uh, describe the research because the videos uh, the author q and a uh, videos will be watched by many aspiring authors who are <laughs> starting their journeys so a uh, lot of our uh, you know conversations would be highly helpful to them when uh, you know they start their own process my inspiration has been uh, shrikant telagiri in this actually yeah. so uh, went through a lot because it's like way before uh, the even rigveda started right i mean even before uh, that time so uh, okay let's put it this way if if the novel right i mean it it's a pretty simple love story i mean there is a love triangle between yayati devyani and shrimishtha um devyani gets to be vengeful uh, so on and so forth and then there's a huge fight eventually between the sons and uh, sons of devyani and all that stuff and mm-hmm. so on it's a pretty simple life story and um but it's really like you know fascinating because there's a lot of human emotions that comes into it there's a lot of like you know conflict that can be like um quote and quote pictured in a very interesting way and all that stuff but none of this would actually gain color unless if it was put in a proper context and that is exactly what i have tried to do so if you look at other uh, things whatever i read about yayati and all that stuff yayati is unfailingly coming across as some kind of a lustful character who actually grabbed youth from his own children and he's actually a villain and all that stuff 
and uh, devyani comes across another villain so who basically curses uh, or rather gets uh, her father to curse yayati and makes him lose his youth and so on and so forth and sharmishtha is like you know sacrifice kind of a person and you know uh, and so on and so forth but i think all this is true but there's also a tinge of uh, you know both positives and negatives mixed with the mixed into the whole thing but the color comes mostly from context right uh the time is a pre rigvedic like you know none of the systems were really there or being developed and all that stuff and uh so that was the challenge and uh i tried uh by the way i appreciate you for uh, those maps of yours you know always always puts the context and i am a huge fan of always having a map in front of you just so you know exactly where all these things to place yes, yes, yes. you know so um the challenge was in terms of where might it have actually taken place you know imagining you know it might have taken place okay in kashmir maybe you know before all these things and then the uh, asuras must have been there and all that stuff so that kind of became easy because from then on you can actually make it into a uh, you know a uh, uh, war for the privacy of the river system and so on and so forth and i was helped in a huge way by dilesh ok and then he basically okay when i started off it was kind of like you know pratishthana the capital pratishthana was actually in maharashtra by then right that's how i started and then nothing was gelling and then that is when i kind of you know how it is oh it it does not make sense you know the i can i cannot reconcile what shrikant telgeri is talking about with pattern uh, and all that stuff you know i just can't reconcile it so i had to go uh, take help of uh, nilesh ok and then he helped me out with all that stuff and then once you have the setting right it kind of uh, fell into place and uh, similarly like you know i didn't want to when you actually go through mahabharat for example yayati is actually a great guy in a lot of ways you know he actually advises puru about like you know how to rule and all that stuff and then he goes on and then advises pratardana and all all those people i mean mm. uh, the madhavi sons madhavi sons about, right so about uh, like basically the life lessons you know a person who has got that stature who has done so many ashwamethas and all that stuff cannot be the villain that he is made out to be in popular culture exactly. and i want to put i wanted to put that straight i mean i i didn't want him to be the total villain and it is too easy to make him into the into a villain so i didn't want to make it that way um yeah so yeah it's been a discovery for me i mean I, like basically like going over everything and then trying to understand where exactly the lot of it is not said even in like you know you have to dig for it so yeah. it's it becomes kind of difficult to dig for things and then find corroborating uh, facts mm-hmm. somewhere else and so on yeah sure i know it came out at completely jumbled but hopefully it <laughs> it's more or less making sense so the whole process more or less works out like uh, you know you are you start with a map then try to make sense of the event flow and then you know corroborate yeah. uh, from various sources and then uh, there is this part of inspiration which is absolutely necessary without that uh, the story yes. just doesn't uh, proceed forward uh, yes so i actually that- i wish i could uh... make it into some kind of a mystery kind of a thing you know um you know leave a hook somewhere and then go somewhere else and then under- try to understand oh okay fine this is how it connects with the previous one and all that stuff i have to make it kind of a sequential thing uh deductive kind of a thing in my head otherwise it's difficult for me to actually you know paint it properly and uh, actually abhinav is the master of that you know leave yes, a hook I and then to point out <laughs> No, thank yeah. you. Uh, so, since uh, we are talking about that, uh, Manjula, I have a, a question, right? So, knowing the Mahabharat is one thing. Uh, knowing your characters and the references from 
the Puranas is one thing, right? But when it comes to creating a 250, 300 page book out of that, it requires a lot more, both by way of process and planning as well as uh, you know the, there's a certain craft of writing that has to you know fit in and uh, and and you know appeal to the reader and again you know going by the first few chapters of your book i think you have succeeded uh, marvelously in that so thank you since uh, you know so since at least there's a you know substantial percentage of our uh, uh, indic book club members who are also uh, authors in various stages of their journey Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about uh, that uh, writing process itself, right? There's an art and there's a craft. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I think you don't know how to separate the two. How do you separate art and craft? Of course, in music, it's easy, right? I mean, it's the theory is all already there. Like, you know, you understand, like, you know, the Sarigam Padanisa and all that stuff. And then the craft is in terms of delivery and how, you know, a, being a performer, if you will. Uh, I guess you can translate the same thing into writing as well. Um, even though craft is more in terms of a mastery of your language, your medium, and how, how you deliver it and stuff like that, I suppose. Um, the art part of it is inspiration. Um, so basically it is news. And I love that part, actually. I mean, I don't know whether I have succeeded or not. I hope I do. I have. But it's kind of like, you know, you get into, you get into the, the head, uh, the, the characters get into your head. And then they kind of talk to you. And then basically, it's kind of like, I know, my, uh, you know, crazy uncle talking to me all the time, I suppose. That's how but, it happens. <laughs> no, 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 not at happens, all. Manjula Ji, that's what... Uh... <laughs> Uh, that's what we would love our viewers to understand about uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, synergy that happens between the author and the character. So the, because that's uh, that's crucial. That's crucial for the uh, you know story. Right. Uh, and that. I like that actually. I mean, it kind kind of makes you oblivious to things outside, the things that are bothering um, you know the small bothersome things and all that stuff. And that part I actually like a lot. So. Um, Basically, like, yeah, the, to understand how uh, the conflict and the dynamics between the characters, and that is, that is probably is what, like, for example, it is going to fill about 300 uh, uh, pages. And if it is authentic, and if it's in a proper setting, it should make it like, you know, enjoyable. And that should be something that makes it fun to read and perhaps a little bit instructive, you know, that kind of stuff. So in terms of your, uh, you know, your, your sources of inspiration when it comes to authors who have written on the Mahabharat or the Puranas, right? Uh, adaptive uh, fiction or, or retellings and all. Do uh, you want to share some of your inspirations there? Actually, Dr. Bhairapa has been a very, very, very strong influence. And uh, yeah, uh, I... You, you have absolutely no idea how many times I read Uttarakanda. I must have read it some, I don't know, some 10 times already, like Ratmardia. So, <laughs> and uh, there is one crucial scene where uh, Sita goes, you know, um, I don't know if it is out in translation. I'm not very sure whether it is in English or not. It's there? It's there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there is one crucial scene where um, Rama's uh, army is defeated by uh, these two boys. And then they're hauled into the assembly, basically. I mean, they're invited to the assembly. And then Sita kind of goes there. I mean, she doesn't want to go there, but she goes there. And then she declares in an open assembly that uh, the, the kids do not, I mean, they're not Rama's children. They're only her children. So that's a claim that she makes. And uh, that's, it's, it's kind of like the first time I, I read it, I was like blown. It was kind of, uh, it was too much. I mean, it's, I don't know, words fail me basically. And also um, the one thing that he keeps exploring is that uh, there is that line, you know, uh, I'm not very sure. So he keeps harping about Atmanas Tukamaya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati, you know, if, 
you love the world because you love yourself. And that is the one line he throughout explores. So Sita is forever like, you know, thinking about, so why did I actually fall in love with Rama? Is it because that I love myself? And he addressed some need inside me that made me fall in love with him kind of a thing. That's pretty deep, you know? Um, yeah. And he's always been my inspiration. I mean, I want to write like him if I can. I'm sure a lot of us want to get that kind of, uh, I know. you know, depth and insight that he has. So uh, excellent. I think, uh, uh, I, I, you know, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that keeps coming up in the context of writing on our uh, uh, texts and Itihasa and Puranas is that if it is going to be a mere retelling, then why do you need to write a book on it? Right? Exactly. Because uh, the, the exactly. texts already have that. On the other hand, uh, you know, if you take, uh, uh, there has to be a certain amount of artistic license, creative liberty that has yes. to be taken to retell it in your own words, to make it relevant and all. And mm -hmm. uh, this is something that, uh, you know, Sai, I think you uh, have uh, have walked that line very, very, you know, nicely in, in, in doing that. But I think uh, you have some questions uh, there that I'm sure you, you want to ask yes. and I'd love to hear both something, your... Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's something which I try to understand from every author, uh, you know, Manjula ji, is to, uh, you know, even after five books, I guess I'll be having the same question even after write, I write five more books. Uh, so where does the creative liberty, does it have a line or, you know, are there lines to not cross or uh, do we, does a, a responsible storyteller, a dharmic storyteller, uh, you know, how does uh, he or she make that? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I, I can call up I can. what liberty can be taken and what liberty cannot. So I know a lot is our internal choice and something yes. that our conscience does not accept. We will not take those liberties. Uh, uh, some things, uh, you know, they refuse to get, uh, you know, uh, like there is a source shouting it out and uh, they refuse to get uh, recast, you know, when we are writing. So they, 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 then the author has to like, you know, something, something doesn't fit in. So something has to change here. So how the you... I didn't quite, I didn't quite get that. No, what I meant to say that is that there is an incident, you uh, you know, uh, we cannot just recast that incident, though there are two, three sources corroborating for the same, the characters in our book refuse to play to that incident again, that event, that particular event, even that happens. Right. And then right. there are these uh, creative ideas where, uh, you know, where the story goes in all directions around the you know, the main plot that Veda Vyasa has drawn for all of us. So uh, what's your, uh, what are your thoughts about yeah. creative liberty? Totally. Uh, how far do can we deviate, if I can use that word, and you know, before getting back to the track? Right. Actually, I have, I have had the same question, really. Mm -hmm. um, so if, <laughs> if you look at it, uh, I don't like to compromise on the main plot line. I don't like to compromise on um, the characters, basically, like, you know, I don't like to um, make them into villains when they ought to be heroes and heroes where they ought to be villains and all that stuff. But I'm perfectly fine with gray characters. You know, I don't want to make that kind of an attribution from my end as far as possible, if you know what I mean. But that being said, right, in this particular thing also, in Devyani also, I have taken lots of creative liberties. For example, in in my Devyani, Shukracharya is instrumental, quote unquote, in cursing uh, in uh, Yayati. He doesn't quite curse Yayati at all. It is in fact Devyani who takes, you know, she does a bunch of things and which kind of result in uh, whatever happens. You know, he gets uh, prematurely uh, old and all that stuff. All those things happen as, as per the uh, storyline. Um, even like, you know, bringing back from a dead alive, that kind of a thing. I have never made it into somebody dies and then he's brought back to life kind of a thing. Somebody who is like almost dead and then he's then brought back to life by 
proper medicine not because of you know some you know he just snaps his finger and then he comes back to life kind of a thing never happens that way so to that extent retelling reinterpretation uh, you know in my own head it's valid uh, if you know what i mean but um saying that uh, i don't know obfuscating the main storyline is not something that i'd like to do and yeah so that is that is to which extent i uh, will take creative liberties i guess sure so that's uh, that's about uh, i guess not concluding is the aim of the artist uh, you know the artist so once we conclude the you know everything becomes con- contrived right everything becomes yes. contrived so concluding that uh, you know about a gray character or anything our job is just to explore and learn i think uh, yes. once totally. we stay true to that If you actually make that kind of a judgment, then it is hubris. I I feel. I mean, it's basically like you know, uh, you are making that determination. You are not allowing the le- reader to understand what exactly is happening behind the scenes. Exactly. So yeah. So that's that's something interesting that uh, I guess uh, I hope our readers make note of. Uh, you know about how conclusion <laughs> is hubris uh, that's something i'm going to remember you know quote and quote manjula ji so uh, guys we shall be asking manjula ji to read uh, an excerpt from her book uh, meanwhile you can type in your uh, questions that you would want to ask the author uh, but before we ask you to read an excerpt uh, my last question for the day would be to talk about your next book uh, i heard that it's on another very interesting character <laughs> yeah it's going to be on madalasa actually i i hope yeah i i have a bunch of uh, books that are brewing i really don't know how much time effort etc etc i'll be able to uh, you know uh, devote to that two of my books are uh, are already like you know coming out one translation of uh, savarkar um uh, so that's gomantak from hindi into english and ajaya from kannada into english the two of them are uh, coming out um about madalisa actually that's that's uh, you know coming out to be that's that's again another fascinating character to me so uh she is actually rutudwaja's wife and rutudwaja is actually vatsa uh the he is pratardana's son ah okay so yeah. I- imagine that right so mm-hmm. at the same time i mean and there's a whole bunch of wars like he is devodasa's son you know devodasa uh, of kashi and so on and there's a whole bunch of wars that are taking place between the haihayas and the kashis yes mm-hmm. right so it's again the backdrop of the war and all that stuff and then there are rakshasas and all that stuff that are uh, you know coming into play alarka actually uh, uh, defeats kshemaka the rakshasa and then re establishes uh, Va- varanasi as a big grand city alarka happens to be fascinating isn't it yeah, fascinating <laughs> alarka is the youngest son of madalasas madalasas uh, son dwaja madalasas just explaining to our viewers right so that that's something fascinating because i always wondered about madalasa as to some uh, somebody who got this uh, wonderful love story uh, you know it has adventure everything and right. uh, then after motherhood she just turns into this uh, recluse uh, uh, you know it almost uh, uh, you know it strikes me as somebody uh, because kshatra dharma you have to bring up uh, yes. sons who are uh, capable of furthering the kingdom or uh, you know so here uh, madalasa say it seems as a very conflicted character to me but uh, yes uh, you know after hearing your insights i guess i'm going to wait for that book as well <laughs> it is uh, Thank I, you. i think it is one of the most fascinating characters from the markande puran if you look at it it's a uh, i think it occupies a substantial part of more than i think 40 50 pages if i if i recall yes. Yes. and you know the way she laughs when uh, uh, you know her yes. husband names uh, her uh, you know the sons and it, it is stunning if you you know look at it uh, 
a character such as hers has not really been talked about much uh, you know compared to other puranic female characters so uh, i for one am you know looking forward to your book on that when do you expect it to release ah uh, i have been meaning to finish the first draft almost like you know last month but it's uh, <laughs> it's been taking some time i'm also working on a bunch of translations so it's kind of like it's going to be maybe in a, about a couple of months i hope i have to uh, bring it out excellent uh, yeah <clears throat> so as a sai said uh, we would love for you to read out Uh, uh, you know any passage extract from your book uh, that you uh, you know want to share with the with our readers and viewers okay thank you let me just try to <clears throat> okay so it is in a situation where kacha is kind of like you know they're sending kacha out to meet with shukra shukracharya so um indra had to figure out an effective deterrent to the asura onslaught and fast jayanti was back home and it did not help that he had to contend with a heartbroken daughter indra went to brahaspati his preceptor seeking his help acharya you know the asura army is constantly attacking the deva lands we are trying to repulse them but they are launching raids all along the border we had the upper hand with our new weapons for a while but now our casualties are m- much higher than theirs shukra manages to save many lives using his sanjeevni their morale is higher we need to do something to combat this can you think of something brihaspati said we need to learn the sanjeevni not only to save our soldiers but to save mankind we need to groom someone who will be able to learn that science it has to be someone deserving someone capable of learning the sanjeevini someone who has studied all the basics already so he does not lose too much time catching up on the prerequisites someone personable organized intelligent and dedicated so he can live up to shukra's high standards indra asked do we have someone like that it seems like a tall order brahaspati had studied with shukra and knew how talented he was He had always wanted his son Kacha to be Shukra's student. Kacha had trained under him and his father, father Sage Angirasa. Sage Angirasa had made an in-depth study of diseases and their cure. He had studied ways to prolong life. Angirasa's university also investigated and taught topics such as statecraft and commerce. The knowledge of the Sanjeevini would be a welcome addition. to the capabilities of the university but brihaspati also knew of shukra's antipathy toward him he said quietly i would like to see kacha become shukra's student but i'm not sure shukra will accept him we just have to make the effort and leave the rest to providence brihaspati continued even if he does accept kacha as a student i doubt shukra will impart the secret of the sanjeevini to kacha the odds are st- stacked against the possibility but for the moment kacha was their best choice brihaspati called his son and said kacha i have imparted to you all the knowledge i possibly could as you know there are three stages of learning the first is shravana or listening you have heard everything i had to say to you the second and third stages are exclusively your responsibility the third the second stage as you know is manana or thinking about what you have heard mulling over it to thoroughly understand opposing ideas and performing a purva paksha before coming to a conclusion the third stage is nididhyasana internalizing your learning and making it your own you have thought about your subject matter so much that it now becomes almost like instinct I hope you are in the third stage of your learning. If you are, I would want you to go and apply to study with Shukracharya. If he accepts you as a student, learn all you can from him. He is a great researcher. He has done much penance and innovated the knowledge of the Sanjeevini and has saved many lives. I want you to learn this knowledge. 
the relationship between a teacher and a pupil is something sacred until there is a connection a guru will not have those conversations with a student that will set the student on the path of seeking and unless the student feels the connection he will not be able to ask those questions that will prod the guru to search the depth of his understanding and address his students issues together they can scale new heights of discovery there's a joy in that discovery a feeling that cannot be described in words kacha i want the joy for you that is my blessing as your father and your teacher i hope shukra will accept you as a student kacha's heart swelled he was excited beyond words indra stood watching the emotional moment between father and son he did not say anything lest he interject a note of something too practical even cynical he held his peace and smiled kacha prostrated first before his father and then before indra indra said kacha you are carrying with you the hopes and aspirations of an entire nation i wish you every success in your efforts vijay bhava he rose to leave kacha walked him to the main entrance of the ashram as they walked along indra said be respectful of your guru you will learn a lot when you establish a personal connection shukra is a doting father his daughter devyani is my granddaughter make friends with devyani and win her regard shukra does not refuse her anything if devyani holds you in high esteem you have one half the ba- battle because shukra will then see you in a very favorable light but always remember you are there as a res- representative of the devas our hopes and aspirations ride on you when jayanti heard kacha was going to vrishabhagiri she sent word to kacha to meet her before he left she had become somewhat reclusive of late focusing on her study prayers and meditation but this time she made an exception i hope you get accepted as shukra's student kacha she said he's a great teacher you will learn a lot you will be a great man thank you i will do my best to justify your confidence in me jayanti hesitated and then softly kacha i realize you are going on a mission to vrishabhagiri i don't know the details and i don't want to know but i only ask you to be kind to devyani and not involve her in politics she has been orphaned even while her mother is alive kacha knew she had left a lot unsaid he had a lot to achieve but he was walking a tight rope dusk had fallen the cool breeze felt good on his overheated cheeks as kacha walked home remembering everyone's instructions and injunctions he knew jayanti's unspoken words would live with him for a long time thank you that, that is uh, you know wonderful uh... that, that is such a nice uh, you know introduction excerpt thanks uh <clears throat> we have a few questions uh, from uh, from our uh, viewers so one uh, uh, one is a comment from kaushik ram prasad that came very early on and he says that very glad to hear about ajay I remember reading it in kannada decades ago thank you uh, another question is does garuda ship outside india can you tell us if it will be available in paperback or ebook form outside india soon uh, it's going to be on amazon.com it's probably going to be on kindle as well soon okay perfect yeah uh, uh, i really don't know a couple of weeks hopefully um yeah okay i don't know how soon though okay we have a couple of questions that have come up so i'll ask the first one this is from uh, shiv kumar mm-hmm. uh, uh and he says what is the most striking element of yayati sharmishtha devyani gatha that uh, struck you i am looking for that compelling element that makes a creative retelling is it history or an aspect that you see as highly relevant today is it an aspect of the tradition that you would like to uphold uh, and valmiki got inspired by the killing of the kranch pakshi i guess it's mostly that you know um the uh the conflict between youth and old age you know how long you want to hold on to uh, youth that kind of a thing and basically like you know to my mind devyani represents everything 
youthful you know her rebellion her uh you know she, willfulness and you know the way she wants to actually dominate everything that basically that that kind of a thing you know it's lack of judgment to a large extent you know she's still learning and stuff like that so i think that is the fundamental thing about the whole thing i mean of course the backdrop of rigveda rigveda is the other thing that is extremely compelling the backdrop of uh, the whole thing and of course the historicity of how their sons form tribes and then go away in all directions and all that stuff and out of india the, so in many ways this particular thing this uh, story is like how do you say seminal i mean i'm not sure i have done justice to it but i hope i have put all the questions in in front of my readers that's the idea yeah i hope i, I, I have answered the question no no i think that's that's what all of us i think uh, uh, can can at best aspire to do to you know if our readers uh, uh, come away from uh, a, a book such as this with questions that that leads them to you know read and discover answers for themselves i think that is uh, uh, you know that in itself is a creditable achievement uh, so kaushik ram prasad has this question and he says i have a question to all the panelists oh okay uh so how do you him as hamza nandi on twitter yes, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, i follow him and he's a he's he's a fountain head of uh, of insight yes. and uh, knowledge and music yes <laughs> so he's 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 asking uh, how do you manage your time in making the books in your mind actually get to fruition please share any good practices that have helped you i have this problem of of having too many unfinished projects some original and some in translation so would like to use your experiences to help me complete some thanks in advance uh so first let's hear you manjula because you know you have not only done you not only you know written uh, your first book but you have several translations uh, in the works uh, you know from canada and uh, from uh, uh, you know you've translated from canada from english and so on so let's start with you then uh, we'll uh, you know go to uh, you know sai she has uh, uh, you know several works under her belt so i am the least qualified to answer this one so i'd like to start with you um first off i don't think i have done such a great job that that's uh, i'll put it right out there <laughs> and the second is i guess it's madness question you know i mean once you actually get into the book it will draw you i mean i don't have to work for it it will kind of you know it will pull me into it uh, at, at there is a um, how do you say the psychological point after which there is no turning back up until that a psychological point you are actually working with it i mean you you are like oh my god i don't i really don't know how exactly i have to express myself after the psychological hour it's kind of like it is pulling you there is no way you can you know you can stop doing it so that's that's the that's the best answer i can give is that your experience sai sure uh, yeah of course inspiration uh, plays a major role uh, but i also in why you know that plays a very major role in the first book is what Uh, i have discovered from the second book onwards uh, that muse wants the writer to work the artist to work so uh, so there has to be what helped uh, me uh, complete my projects is a constant uh, moving of the needle uh, i won't say that i've been able to write daily but you know on a weekly wise i i have just seen that if i uh, you know maintain a momentum of say so many words each day then there are spikes that are like the boon you know our uh, 300 right. 400 500 words every day is like our tapasya and uh, there are spikes which uh, you know happen uh, because of that tapasya right and uh, i'm not saying everything will be perfect we'll have to rework uh, rewrite and uh, you know there is a, that whole process but uh, one thing is not editing while you are in the right you know first draft process helps because uh, once the critical voice starts speaking the creative voice goes silent uh, yes uh, that's what they say that uh, cre- creative uh, voice is like a child uh, you know it uh, runs wild it doesn't care about rules and uh, you know 
and uh, once the, if there is a very controlling parent the child does not develop that individuality but if mm-hmm. there is no parenting then the child can turn out into anyone so there has to be that balance so the first draft is the child's field you know <laughs> but once the editing kicks in it's the parental control the critical voice so that uh, that balances the momentum and the quality uh, is what but uh, i think uh, hamsa nandi ji is uh, trying to tease us because he has a lot of books <laughs> exactly i follow him on medium and he love i mean i like his reading uh, writing a lot and by the way another question for you there is a certain point after which you cannot stop writing i mean that's the way i feel would you agree yeah that has happened with that- my first book but uh, second uh, the, every other book has uh, point uh, you know there are points where we have to literally push ourselves and then there is a whole uh, you know uh, momentum that takes us forward so that spikes and low right. uh, they keep happening so i think there are other questions or uh, abhida i mean you can't escape <laughs> <laughs> i was <coughs> uh gosh okay uh see with the my insight so far and uh has been that the, the first book gets done on the back of passion you know it's mm-hmm. that uh, it's that urge inside that says there's a story that needs to be told and i'm the only one in this whole wide world that can tell it the way it needs to be told and i think uh, not knowing what it will take to take a book from inception to completion and editing and uh, and and putting all the pieces uh, together is something that uh, you know it's like uh, it's it's like a child who doesn't know that uh, the process of learning to stand and walk and then run will also involve falling down about a, a thousand times so the child doesn't know that doesn't care and it does everything it it you know walks and uh, totters and uh, staggers and falls and runs and and gets up again with the second book or the third which uh, you know i'm trying to work now it is i know that once it is done it will be beautiful it will be great it will be a sense of achievement but i think i also know now i'll have to fall down 100 times maybe not 1000 but 100 times so it's like do i want to fall down so many times can i write without falling down so this is i think what sai you were talking about the uh, don't let uh, the parent uh, uh, you know control the child during the creative process and i'm saying that you know can't i just learn to walk again without falling down so my challenge is that uh, it's like if i have to write a uh, 100000 words and then cut it down edit it down to 80000 why don't i do it so that i just write the 80000 words in the first go what my you know my 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 the brain part of me tells me that that is an idiotic way to think because that's not going to happen but uh, that so that's my uh, my my experience so far uh, i'll go to yeah. the third <laughs> sorry Actually, uh, you... perhaps i have learned that yet then i i have to you know uh, in my second i'm kind of sort of halfway through there and perhaps i have to learn all these things all over again you know i'll tell you how it went afterwards yes we love to hear that <laughs> we'll wait for you to return and uh... <laughs> so uh... So Ramavarpu's Srinivas has a question can you say something about your translation of the marathi work said during the first war of independence as yes. this is savarkar's book that you were talking about no actually no. i that oh yes yeah, yes that, yes yes that that, that the fictional biography right please yes right. i said i wanted to ask you so please tell us <laughs> so this is actually a very fascinating kind of a thing for me so i read this book that's translated to kannada i don't know marathi i uh, trans it's translated into kannada and it is called agni divya in kannada so i went through it and it was like a totally fascinating kind of a thing the 1857 war is like you know uh, described in rather graphic detail and this guy uh, the like the brahmin convert to christianity like i said he's actually a very close friend of a uh, mutineer sipai uh, and but they uh, the sipai is cautious enough not to tell him anything about it because he's already converted to christianity and all that stuff so went through the whole thing 
extremely emotional book and i was like not soft for a while and all that stuff so I started researching about like you know the background and stuff like that started reading turns out that this man is actually a real uh, character called uh, nil yeah nilkan shastri gore his uh, his father gore and his books are out there now all of them are coming up and believe it or not in like you know um, Uh, the, the theological colleges he still studied his book is still studied and so on and so forth and nobody actually knows that he was a completely disillusioned soul at the end of the day and he kind of sort of he had a conversation with pandita ramabai you probably know about her she was also another uh, christian convert so there's a whole lot of conversations that go on and contemporaneously you have all these uh, uh, prince dilip singh and then uh, the uh, kurk princess victoria gorham and all those things their biographies right. uh, coming up and intermeshing with this guy's life and so on pretty fascinating actually and uh, when i actually discovered that he was a real character i was blown again i i didn't even realize i thought it was just a fictional you know it's just a book it's it's a story and turns out it's actually a biography a fictionalized biography yeah it's amazing uh yes. the marathi book is brought by um, it, it's uh, oxford university press horapala so i don't know who to approach for the translation rights i that's the that's, that's what is holding me back otherwise i would have just put it out there on like you know on a heartbeat fascinating yeah we we hope uh, uh, you're able to find and get those translation rights uh, uh, i think uh, having it in uh, translated in in english will open the book up to uh, yeah. an even wider audience uh, the last question we have is by shrinivas uh, salapaka and he says in your research do you find multiple stories in old texts that refer to the same incident how do you choose between them right um see basically that's that's what i was trying to say like uh, in matsya purana and devi bhagavat purana devyani is actually jayanti's daughter and that is a narrative that suits me because now i know that there's a conflict in in inbuilt in the whole thing so that is the version i choose to go with that kind of a thing um so the same thing will happen in madalas also for example um Devodasa is married to this woman Drishadvati, and then he, the Purana talks about uh, his children and all that stuff. And in one version, Devodasa does not have children, and in another version, uh, Madhvi is the mother of Pratardana. So that kind of a thing. So obviously, I'm going to go with the version that Madhvi is uh, the mother of Pratardana. That's the version that I'm going to choose. So yeah, I mean, I guess. it's basically a narrative that i want to you know uh, go with so to speak good so uh so manjula thank you very much for coming on uh, uh, on to the indic book club q and a and we uh, look forward to the release of the book and wish you all the best and hope lots of people uh, uh read it and share their views and reviews on it so Uh, by way of advice to all our viewers and and everyone is that uh, if you read the book and you like it please do take a minute to put up a rating and a review on amazon or goodreads or if you can both of those sites because uh, for for upcoming authors uh, both these sites uh, and reviews on these sites form a very very crucial part of helping convince other readers to uh, also pick up uh, your book so please do do that and uh, we'll put up this uh, video on youtube in a few days and share the link out uh, any closing uh, comments uh, manjula for uh, for our uh, viewers please to read <laughs> rate and review and all that stuff i hope you like it i mean it's it's kind of like you know the shot in the arm if you actually like it and uh, no better than encouragement and uh, i'd like to thank uh, sankrant and uh, garuda prakashan for all the you know encouragement and indic book club for all the encouragement you guys have offered thank you so much i appreciate it it's been our pleasure and since you mentioned it it is available uh, you can order it from garudabooks.com/devyani d e v a y a n i and uh, garuda uh, has uh, done a fabulous job you know just going by the cover and i know the quality of their uh, production process has been you know uh, immaculate and uh, for those of you who don't know uh, i believe uh, uh, it's got a blurb by a very uh, famous author 
Yes. <laughs> Do tell us in closing. Yeah. You can't. Uh, we can't let you go without that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was thrilled to be endorsed by Amish Tripathi. and i want to thank him so much for the whole thing and it's been like you know that kind of an encouragement is going to go a long long way uh, i'm thrilled to bits what more can i say so folks those on the fence i don't think you need any other uh, you need any further you know inducements to go buy the book read the book uh, you know an endorsement a blurb by amish uh, is uh, is i think uh, the last word there so Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Manjula, for coming uh, to thank the Q and A. Thank you. Bye. Bye.